today we are going to be talking about modesty. But hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time to this channel, please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and also make sure that you give this video a like. And if you're a hater, it's fine. Give this video a thumbs down. It's really good for the algorithm. But if you are a first timer, it would really mean a lot to me if you could subscribe to this YouTube channel. So I will just give you a, a few seconds to do just that. Did you subscribe? Great. Now you can watch the video and be a part of our free thinking loving family. Before we get more in depth into this topic, which is modesty, let's look into the Bible, the word of God, and see what it has to say about modesty. Also, I will be reading from the King James Version, but in the subtitles, I will put it in, in an easier translation in case it's hard for you to understand the King James Version. First Peter 3 three to four, which states, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Then there's one Timothy two, nine to 10, which reads, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shame with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Colossians 3.12, which reads, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. And I think that this specifically is a very important verse because you can be the most conservative dressed person on the planet, you know, from head to toe, you, your entire body can be covered, but you can still have an immodest, mean spirited, impure heart. And we all especially need to work on our hearts a lot more. Then there's James, Three, which, which states, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm with whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the ton is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a master a little fire kindle. And the ton is a fire, a word of iniquity, a world of iniquity. So is the ton among our members, that is defileth, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed by mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. There, therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith we, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no mountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For there, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. 
But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. James 3 is going to be very important later on in the video because, you know, modesty, as I will talk about later on in the video, it's not just about your physical appearance, what you wear, how you look. It's also about the inside. Um, it's about how you speak to others. It's about your heart. And it's just... It's not all about the physical appearance. So I didn't really discuss this in my testimony. I made a testimony video about how I found God on this channel that I'll link in the description if you want to watch it. But I didn't mention this in my testimony, but I really experienced a lot of church hurt when it comes to discussing the topic of modesty. So it actually caused me to unfortunately turn away from God, which I really regret doing. And then it almost made me become a people pleaser. So my freshman year of college, I was attending a public university. Um, I didn't like it very much. It was really hard. I actually transferred from that university to attend the university that I go to now, which is a Christian university. But I was honestly like, I'm going to be a little vulnerable with you guys. I was one of those girls that believed that dressing provocatively was empowering. And so I felt like I had to hide who I was constantly around other people and that the only way that I could get attention, because I didn't like myself. I mean, I wasn't confident, I was extremely insecure. So I actually had to wake up and choose confidence every single day because I didn't feel confident. I was extremely sad. Um, I felt like I had to change who I was around certain people. Um, I had a lot of friends, but I still felt empty inside because I wasn't, I was doing stuff to try and please other people. So I would wear more provocative clothing to try and make myself be liked by others. In 2019, I had an encounter with God and this was when I was kind of like starting my walk again with Christ. But basically one night um, I was in my dorm and I left. I came back home late from hanging out with friends and I got back to my dorm and I dropped down on my knees and started crying. And God appeared in my dorm room that night. He showed himself to me. I've had convictions from God before, but I've never really had him speak to me. So he, he showed up in my dorm while I was crying and asking him to help me. And I was like, I'm tired of, I was like, God, I'm so tired of trying to be someone I'm not in order to be liked by others. I want, I just, please show, show me that you're real. Show me that I'm more than just my appearance. So I had this like modest sweater in my closet that I never wore. Um, because like I said, I just, I didn't like modest clothing at this time. I thought, you know, modest clothing was super boring, and so I didn't want to wear this sweater. So God appears in my dorm, and um, he picks this sweater out of my closet, has like a turtleneck, and he shows it to me, and he points to it. And he says, Kira, you've lived your entire life trying to please others. When are you going to start working to please me instead? So this reminds me of two verses in the Bible the first one that I'm going to read to you is John 7, 24, which says, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. The next verse that reminds me of my encounter with God is Galatians 1, 10, which states, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So this really set in after my encounter with God that being a people pleaser is not going to please God and it will just continue to leave me miserable. So I started dressing more modestly. I stopped showing my body off more. Um, those of you who followed me on Instagram, like during my freshman year of college, you probably saw a lot of immodest pictures that I used to post online. Um, and I deleted a lot of those pictures. I'm, I'm not perfect by any means with the clothing that I wear, but I try my best, okay? Some people as well who call themselves Christians, 
Um, they call themselves Christians, but in reality, like the way that they speak to or about others and the way that they act says otherwise. This kind of gives off the mindset of a Pharisee, um, which we never want to have the mindset of a Pharisee. This is because Pharisees believed that they were better than everyone else. They believed that they were above everyone else, even Jesus. They were super legalistic. They were also very, very judgmental about other people and how they lived their lives. So for me personally, I actually feel more feminine and more like a woman when I dress more modestly or when I'm not like dressing super provocative. Another thing that I think is super important to bring up is the Bible focuses a lot on the heart. It focuses a lot on your heart and just internal, internally. Um, Modesty has no direct code. So there's no direct code to modesty. This is also because there are very different body types and we need to remember that. Many Christians are have their own definition of modesty that they use this to basically shame other people when they don't have those same convictions. So it's like, you might think, this also really depends on what church you go to. You could go to a non-denominational church where it's okay to wear ripped jeans or a Catholic church where you do have to cover up or a Orthodox church where you do have to cover up as well or like Pentecostal, etc. The church that you go to also really informs your views on modesty, but I would argue that it's not your responsibility to push your convictions upon other people because we are all at different walks with Christ and it's not your job to shame or condemn other people when it comes to the topic of modesty. Just because someone's not dressing the way that you want them to dress does not mean that they're a horrible human being or a fake Christian. And I feel like a lot of Christians need to remember that. Like I said before, and I, I have notes written on my computer, so if you're wondering why I'm looking over at something, I'm looking over at my notes. But modesty also doesn't just have, it doesn't just mean physical appearance. There are many other things that it consists of as well. Modesty is also about how you talk. It's about your heart. It's all, it also can consist, consist of what you tend to post on social media. I would get called a, f a fake Christian when I would show my ankles, when I would show my neck, when I would show my arms. Um, even if everything, like if all the inappropriate body parts like were covered, I would still be called a whore and shamed by other Christians online. And that would really make me question myself. It would really make me think, am I really a Christian? Or maybe what they're saying is right. Before I mentioned um, James 3, right? James 3 tells us to tame our tongues. This is because modesty is not just a physical thing. It's also really about the tongue. And to be honest, you know, if you're going to try and have the audacity to judge other people or shame and condemn other people's relationships or their salvation or their relationships with God based off of what they're wearing, then you need to put down your stone and pick up your Bible and do some self-reflection. Because how are you going to call yourself a Christian? How are you going to wear a cross around your neck if your heart is a modest and the way that you're speaking to other human beings, if you're treating other people like crap, how can you call yourself a Christian if you're going to act like a mean, unrighteous, judgmental person? There are many proverbs as well that also talk about taming the tongue. The reason for this is because you can either speak life and wisdom into someone or you can speak or breathe death into someone and the stuff that you say holds a lot of power. Our tongues are filled with poison. So we need to learn how to use our tongues wisely. And this doesn't just come with like speaking to other human beings. You need to be kind to everyone, but this is especially important when you are speaking to your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, because shaming and condemning other people and judging people based off what they're wearing as if it's going to like you're judging someone's salvation, you're judging someone's relationship with God based off of what they're wearing. I think that says more about you than them. And I think a lot of Christians personally 
need to just mind their own business about other people's walks with God because we were all at a time in our lives where we were like new Christians or when we weren't like acting modest and we need to stop shaming other people and condemning other people and we need to learn more grace and respect and compassion towards our fellow believers in Christ and towards non-believers. Choosing your words is also very, very important when speaking to other people in general. And I also said that this is important when speaking to other believers because the truth of the matter is, is that we are not perfect, but we serve a God who is. Our physical appearance will fade, but our internal characteristics remain forever. People won't remember how you looked like when you passed away. They're going to remember how you treated them and they're going to remember those internal characteristics because your physical characteristics will fade, but the internal characteristics about yourself will last forever. We also serve a God that while he did flip over tables and while he cracked open a whip in church, um, at the same time though, Jesus was incredibly, he was very non-judgmental about the physical appearance, um, which is when I mentioned John 7, 24, that we shouldn't judge people by the physical. Jesus sat with tax collectors. He sat with every single type of sinner you can possibly imagine. He sat with tax collectors. He sat with prostitutes. He didn't judge them off of the outside appearance, he judged them based on the heart. And the sinners changed, he didn't. But he didn't condemn them or like hate on them. He spread love to them. And I think as Christians, we also need to remember what would Jesus do in this situation? If I'm gonna call this girl online a whore because she's wearing a crop top or she's showing her shoulders or she's showing part of her arms, What? Is that like productive? Do you think Jesus would do that? Ask yourself that. I'm starting to kind of also start a new sort of format with my videos. A lot of the time, like in the mornings, and I'm trying to still hold myself to this, I'm not perfect by any means, but I do serve a God who is perfect. A lot of times in the mornings, I do try to get into the word because Jesus breathes life into my lungs every single day, I believe wholeheartedly, and I'm not judging anyone that doesn't do this, I try to start my morning with God because Jesus allowed me to live another day. So therefore, he needs to be part of my morning. So I decided to make Jesus the beginning of my videos by reading out scripture And then I want to, and then at night, I do also try and get into my Bible. And I end, I start the day in the Word, and I end the day in the Word. So I'm going to start doing that with my videos, where I start my videos in the Word, and then I start to, and then I end my videos in the Word. Normally as well, I try to leave you guys with some scripture. I'm sorry that the past videos I haven't been doing this, but today, the scripture that I'm going to leave you with is 1 Corinthians 10 31 and I'm going to be reading from the King James Version translation Um, but if you don't understand the King James Version translation in the subtitle I'll put an easier translation so that you can understand the verse that I'm reading but 1 Corinthians 10 31 states whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do do all to the glory of God With everything that you do, regardless of your physical appearance, make sure that everything that you're doing, you are glorifying God in all that you do. And make sure that with the tongue, with the internal characteristics, that you're also glorifying God as well. But anyways, you guys, that's all for me. Please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It really, really helps me out. I work super hard on my videos for you guys. Um... So please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's fun, it's free, it's a good time, and you get to join an entire loving community of fellow freethinkers. And also, make sure that you check the description box down below. You can follow me on Instagram, you can follow me on Twitter, Telegram, TikTok, all of those links will be posted in the description box, so make sure that you are following me on all of my socials to keep up to date with me. 
But anyways, that's all for me. I hope all of you enjoyed this video. God bless, good luck, and take care.